Why is Angola, a country rich in natural resources, still one of the poorest countries in the world? This is what we are examining today. The riddle of the Angolan economy. Tucked away on the southwest coast of Africa, this country is a land of bountiful treasures. Angola is located on the west coast of southern Africa between Namibia and the Republic of Congo. It also borders the Democratic Republic of Congo and Zambia to the east. Its total land area is 1,246,700 square kilometers, with a coast of 1,600 kilometers on the Atlantic Ocean. The capital and commercial center is Luanda, the largest port city on the north coast of the country. It is the continent's second largest oil producer, and its territory shines with diamond riches. Angola is known for its rich oil deposits, diamond and gold mines. Other underground riches include phosphate, iron, copper, manganese, rare earth elements, and natural gas. Angola's forests are good for timber, and its pristine lakes and rivers are sources of clean water. Thanks to its climate, Angola is also an important coffee-growing country. To understand why it has so many resources and yet its people struggle with poverty, we need to untangle a web of corruption, mismanagement, and the lingering effects of a brutal civil war. The oil and diamond industries, which should be the country's golden ticket to prosperity, have been buried under widespread corruption. Instead of being passed on to citizens, the revenue from these sectors has been siphoned off and lined the pockets of an elite few. This large-scale profiteering has left the masses in poverty and created a sharp gap between the rich and the poor. Added to this is a history of mismanagement. The country's wealth has been grossly misallocated and funds that should have been used for development and public welfare have been squandered. As a result, basic services such as health, education and infrastructure are in shambles, deepening the economic crisis. There is also the fear of war. Angola's economy is still recovering from 27 years of civil war, which began in 1975 and ended in the early 2000s. The war left the country's infrastructure in ruins and its economy in shambles. Recovery has been slow and painful and the scars of the war are still visible in the country's struggling economy. So the story of Angola's economy is not just one of natural wealth. It is a complex narrative of corruption, mismanagement, and the aftermath of war. It is the story of a country that, despite its wealth, still struggles with poverty. So, what has led to this paradox? To understand this, we need to look at Angola's history. Angola's present situation cannot be understood without looking at its turbulent past. Let's take a trip down memory lane, shall we? Our journey begins in the 15th century. The Portuguese, eager to establish trade routes and spread their influence, set their sights on the African continent. Angola, with its strategic location and abundant natural resources, quickly became a prime target. The Portuguese colonization of Angola was brutal. For over 400 years, years, the Angolan people were subjected to forced labor, exploitation, and cultural assimilation. Fast forward to the 20th century, a wave of anti-colonial sentiment swept across Africa, and Angola was no exception. Tired of being exploited and oppressed, the Angolan people began to fight back. The struggle for independence was fierce and bloody, lasting more than 10 years. At the end of the war, with 10,000 Portuguese soldiers killed or wounded, the Portuguese finally withdrew in 1975, but the struggle for control of Angola was far from over. Over. Following Portugal's departure, a power vacuum emerged. The MPLA, which spearheaded independence, wanted to adopt the principles of a nationalist economy and income equality. That's when the United States stepped in. In 1975, UNITA, in collaboration with the United States and colonial Portugal, attacked the MPLA forces during the War of Independence and started a civil war. Angola was a victim of civil war for 27 years. One million Angolans lost their lives until the end of the civil war in 2002. UNITA, directly supported by the United States, was defeated by the MPLA, supported by Cuba, the Soviet Union, and independent African states. Fidel Castro personally ordered assistance to the MPLA and said that, the Angolan Civil War is the most important war against colonialism and slavery. More than 100,000 Cuban soldiers fought for Angolan independence. The country has paid a heavy price for this brutal civil war and constant conflict. Infrastructure was destroyed, communities displaced, and the economy in shambles. As one of the longest civil wars in African history, it has taken its place in the dusty pages of history. It had a profound impact on Angola's socio-political landscape. The country was deeply divided and the scars of the war are still visible today. Moreover, the war devastated Angola economically. Despite being rich in oil and diamonds, the country has struggled to recover. Corruption, mismanagement, and a lack of investment in public services exacerbated the problem. The wealth from Angola's natural resources went to a few, while the majority of the population continued to live in poverty. With the end of the civil 
civil war in 2002, Angola hoped for a brighter future. But did this dream come true? Post-war Angola experienced a boom in the oil industry, but did this wealth trickle down to its citizens? That's a question worth exploring, isn't it? Imagine this. The war is over, things are calm, and there is a sense of hope in the air. Angola is rich in oil reserves, and the industry is booming. It's like a gold rush. But instead of gold, it's black gold crude oil. The boom is felt, and the cityscape begins to transform. Skyscrapers sprout like mushrooms after the rain, and the skyline of the capital Luanda becomes a testament to the prosperity brought by the oil boom. But here is the crux of the story. While the city glitters and sparkles with the glitter of newfound wealth, the lives of ordinary Angolans remain untouched. Instead of being a tide that lifts all boats, the oil boom becomes a wave that washes over the masses and leaves them high and dry. Why, you ask? The answer lies in the complex labyrinth of corruption and economic mismanagement. Instead of being used for the welfare of the people, oil wealth is lining the pockets of the elite. Corruption is so widespread that it is almost the norm, part of everyday life. The wealth from the oil industry, a resource that belongs to the people, is siphoned off and the masses are left in poverty. There is also the issue of economic diversification, or rather the lack of it. The Angolan economy is heavily dependent on oil, almost like a one-horse pony. It's like putting all your eggs in one basket, and when the price of oil falls, the economy takes a hit. So, despite the rapid urban development and flashy skyline, the lives of ordinary Angolans remain unchanged. The prosperity of the oil boom is a mirage that fades as it gets closer. The enormous wealth created from Angola's resources has not translated into prosperity for its people. Why is this so? It is a story of manipulative governance, lack of diversification and economic mismanagement. A story as old as time, but one that needs to change. At the root of Angola's economic paradox lies a deep-rooted problem corruption. I know, I say a lot of corruption, but believe me, there is no other word for it. Now the word corruption may sound like a cliche, like a broken record playing over and over again in the narrative of many developing countries, but the situation in Angola is completely different. Imagine a country whose abundance of natural resources could make every citizen rich, yet the majority live in poverty. Meanwhile, an elite minority feasts on the country's wealth, creating an economic imbalance so sharp as to be almost surreal. This is the reality in Angola. A classic example is the case of Isabel dos Santos, daughter of Angola's former president. She was once considered the richest woman in Africa, with a fortune of over $2 billion, but this wealth was allegedly acquired through corruption during her father's presidency. The ensuing trial was a shocking revelation of the depth of corruption in the country's political and economic spheres. But Angola's corruption quagmire is not just about high-profile cases that make international headlines. It is a systemic problem that permeates all levels of society, from the highest echelons of power to the grassroots, in kickbacks for public contracts, in bribes for basic services, in the embezzlement of public funds. This corruption has a devastating impact on the Angolan economy. It hinders economic growth, increases income inequality, and hinders development. Like a parasite, it feeds on the country's wealth and keeps the majority of the population in poverty. The saddest part? It is ordinary Angolans who bear the brunt of this corruption, the farmer who cannot sell his produce because an official monopolizes the market, the student who cannot get a scholarship because funds have been siphoned off, the patient who cannot get treatment because the health budget has been embezzled. Corruption is a major obstacle to Angola's growth, but how can the country move forward? This is a question that haunts many Angolans, and one that the rest of the world should be asking too. The answer could be the key to transforming Angola from the poorest, richest country to a truly prosperous one. With its rich resources and young population, Angola has the potential to reverse its fortunes. But how? Let's explore some potential solutions for Angola's economic situation. First of all, good governance is key. A ship cannot sail without a competent captain, and Angola's ship has been off course for some time. The country needs leaders who are transparent, accountable, and dedicated to serving the interests of the people. Leaders who can steer the ship away from the rocks of corruption and towards the open waters of prosperity. As the saying goes, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Angola has been heavily dependent on oil, and this overdependence has made its economy vulnerable to fluctuations in global oil prices. It is high time for Angola to explore other sectors such as agriculture, manufacturing and tourism that can create jobs and contribute to economic stability. Investment in infrastructure is another important factor. Good roads, reliable electricity, clean water, these are necessities, not luxuries. They are the building blocks of a thriving economy. By investing in infrastructure, Angola can facilitate trade, attract investment, and improve the quality of life of its citizens. And finally, education. 
it is the passport to the future. Angola's young population is its greatest asset, but this asset needs to be nurtured. By investing in education, Angola can equip its youth with the knowledge and skills to take the country forward. Angola's journey to prosperity is a long one, but with the right steps, the country can overcome its paradoxical economic situation. After all, it is not the resources you have, but how you use them. The road ahead is undoubtedly challenging, but one that can lead to a brighter, more prosperous Angola. The potential is there, it is up to Angola to seize it.